Okay, so I just wanna go really quick through a couple important preferences. I'm not gonna go through all of them. This is also one of the places where Mac and PC differ. So uh, on the Mac, it's right under the Photoshop CC menu. Here on the PC, we go under Edit at the very bottom. We can find Preferences. And I usually just go to General. You can see it's Control-K. It's probably Command-K on the Mac. So uh, let's look really quick at some of these preferences. There's very few that I'm gonna change. I just want you to know about a couple of them. The first thing is under General, you can reset all your warning dialogues and even your preferences. This is just great when sometimes just everything seems a little bit out of whack. You're like, man, there's just some of the settings don't seem right. This can be a great way to kind of handle that. Uh, in the interface, here's one that I'm gonna change that I don't think that you need to. I'm gonna change it so that the tutorials look a little bit better for you guys. Everything's bigger on the screen. So my font size for the UI, I'm gonna change it to large. In UI scaling, I'm gonna put it 200%. This is gonna make everything on my screen just appear much larger, so all the icons and everything will be bigger for you guys. Generally, when I'm working, I don't change this. Workspace, here's kind of a neat one. You can mess up the default workspaces so that Photoshop just like looks wonky and you can't reset it. Here is where you can go and restore the default workspaces to the original way that they show up. And we're gonna talk about that in just a video or two. File handling, here's a couple things that I like to kind of handle in here. The first thing is your automatic save recovery. So here, what I always think about when I look at this is like, how much time do you want to lose? Do you wanna lose five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 30 minutes, or an hour when your computer crashes? Because it will crash. It only saves one recovery file anyway. It's not like it's gonna make a million files. It just saves it every five minutes instead of every 10. That's the only difference there. That's one that I kind of like to set. Here's another really interesting setting is under export. Uh, one thing that I like to do is choose your quick export format. I like the default of PNG. Some people like to change it to JPEG. I recommend PNG. And the reason is that JPEG, you can see there's a quality slider. With PNG, there isn't. The quality is always great. The files are a little bit bigger, but you can also have transparency. So I like to leave that as my default. The other thing that I like to do is I like to put my metadata in. So I'm gonna tell it to include copyright and contact info when it saves my files. That way, if uh, somebody finds my image, they're like, oh, I really love this. I'd love to get in touch with this guy so he could do more work for me. I want them to be able to find me because that might be a way I could make a little bit of extra money. Here under performance, not too much I change here. One thing that you just need to know is that if you start getting weird crashes and stuff and things just are not looking right or visually things are just weird, I've noticed sometimes if you turn off your graphics processor, that might fix it. I had a situation in my lab when I was teaching at school where all of the cursors were just weird when I used a brush and we turned off the graphics processor and it fixed it. A couple weeks later, they updated the video driver and then it worked fine. So video drivers, if they get weird, can mess it up. This is how you turn that off. Photoshop just uses the CPU. So that's a good thing to know about. Here's another really great one. If you have a computer with multiple hard drives in it, you can make it save its backup data, like those recovery files and stuff we were talking about. We can make that save on a separate file than the OS. You can see that this is my startup disk where the operating system and the programs reside. And I'm gonna just make my scratch disk a separate disk. That just kind of helps a little bit in terms of performance. It's not a big deal, but it can help. Units and rulers, here's where you can change the default ruler setting. It's very easy to change in the interface, so it's not a big deal. Here you can change the default resolution for new documents. Print resolution is best at 300. Screen resolution honestly doesn't matter. 72 is just sort of a standard in the industry. And I think that's pretty much it. The two that I think are most important is here at interface, you can change the size of elements on the screen. And I'm gonna do that so you guys can see how it looks. And then also the, is it performance? Yeah, this video card, if it goes wonky and everything's just starting to look weird and it's starting to crash, especially if it tells you that it's something about the video card, then go ahead and turn this option off until you can find updated drivers and that often would fix itself once you update the drivers. So I think that's it. So here's one last thing. When you change those settings, what you need to do is shut down Photoshop and then relaunch it again. 
we can see already that the splash screen is larger and interface on this screen doesn't look much bigger but you will see when we get into if you didn't change yours when i get into my tutorials all my tools and everything are a lot bigger than it will be on your screen so yeah that's it for preferences next we're going to open a file and get working and doing some photoshop tweaks